Good evening, Merrimack. Today is April 15, 2024, and this is the uh, Board of Commissioners meeting Merrimack Village District. Uh, public participation is offered by webinar. Uh, if you go to mvdwater.org and, and look at the agenda for the meeting, there is a link on there that you can access uh, for the Zoom um, connection. Uh, and there's also a um, phone number with a webinar ID. Uh, so um, call the meeting to order at five o'clock and uh, ask everyone to rise for the rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Like allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America, to the Republic for which it stands, one, one nation, nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, we've got four commissioners here. I think Ken Ayers is delayed. He will show up um, at some point tonight. So he was gonna be running a little bit late. So um, we'll kick it off with Kristen Marr uh, to um, speak about uh, revenues, expenditures, capital reserve balance. Take it away. Okay. So our financial, financial situation as of the end of March 31st, we are 75% of through the year. As of right now, our net income is 1.4 million. Um, our revenues, <clears throat> excuse me, are running 3% over the budget through March's budget, which would be $4.5 million of that 6 million total. Our expenses are running about 28.5 less than the budget through March, same amount, 4.5 million. Um, in terms of some of the expenses, the purchase of water expense account 60300. Right now that's showing as zero amount spent. We have been doing the contract with Pentagon. <coughs> we have a budgeted amount of 4, uh, 45,000. And then we also have the full amount of 292. With our net income running at about 1.4, as I had said, we could either do the budgeted amount and the difference within capital or bring in the whole amount. Something to consider. We still have three more months of the year. The other is engineering, account 81900. A lot of that is in, um, being recorded under construction in August right now. Things like uh, Mitchell Woods, artificial recharge, things that budgeted some of it engineering, but I'm kind of keeping it all into a group to see how, how much the whole project itself cost. With those, it's about $152,000 that would need to be transferred in, into engineering based on what you guys have budgeted out for everything. Um, so that will also reduce that 1.4 by the end of the year. So overall, of that 1.4, we could potentially be bringing in 444,000, which would leave us at about a 1.1 for the year, which is still very good. Biggest reason for that is our lack of use of chemicals because our water usage is down. So for our next meeting, I'll probably want you guys to kind of give me a vote or something to move those into the budget or not. I think if you don't have to, and it's very clear that you don't have to, then you probably shouldn't. Use capital, you mean? Yeah. Exactly. I'm thinking our best. Yeah, it sounds like a million dollars in profit is way too much for this organization to carry. If we could have uh, budgeted for it, which appears that we could have, then maybe we should. <laughs> I don't know. But if we can absorb it in the budget, to the fact yeah, that that's what I mean. are. are as long as you don't see anything coming up, I'd be in favor of it. I'm sorry? As long as you don't foresee anything coming up, I mean, I'd be in favor of it. Do we know what the forecast is for this year? Are we going to be in a drought or? Yeah, you mentioned it somewhere. But that would actually be With... into next year's budget, starting for July. Right. Yeah, a drought would be, yeah. And next year's budget looks a lot like this year's budget. Okay. <laughs> I mean, the biggest thing is with when you, you're budgeting, you get a budget for worst case scenario with chemicals and full usage. Yeah. Well, I mean, the, the, the water usage is down. 
chemicals probably a little bit higher than they need to be. So it's not all yes. black to black. I was going to ask that because we're only at 26% on chemicals, but our. And we came down in the budget for next year yeah, for we, chemicals. We adjust those numbers. Yeah, because our water use is not down, not only 10, 26 no, percent. Yeah. So I'm like, there's got to be something else going on. So we also chose to have one of the price increases higher than needed earlier, you know, last fall, basically last summer, right? Yeah. Um, in order to avoid a second one, I think this year, right? Yeah. So it's not surprising that we're ahead of the revenues at all. So that didn't materialize, basically, the increase in chemical costs that we thought it actually came down a little bit probably. And each year we're gonna learn more and more. Yeah, as yeah. Is, I mean, 2024, this current year, we were really only using estimates with four and five. I mean, seven and eight had been oh, yeah. half a year and two and nine wasn't even on. So it was kind of like- <laughs> Well, yeah. we had the COVID surge, right? Uh, the right. Supply, yeah, chain supply chain, chain right, right, right in the middle of it. So it, each year that budget's gonna get refined better and better and better. How much can we roll over as far as uh, um, surplus from one year to another? Just goes I mean, to the fund. Ultimately, there is no yeah. limit. Well, I was under the impression there is actually a little bit of a limit. I don't think we, that we can have pretty much any of the, we can part the revenues. I don't, under unassigned and then. Right, but I thought there's a limitation for that. There is not, okay. Not for municipality. There is for a school district. Right. There's a small portion, and then the rest right. needs to go back for taxes production. Since okay. we're not involved with taxes, then yeah. Um, I would probably also then be. I would not want to put this all into 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 capital reserves. Right. I mean, the signal during the annual meeting was pretty clear, use. right? So. Yeah. And I think the signal was actually in line with what the board also had discussed a couple months prior. We also scaled back a little bit the idea and appreciate why you want to have that reserve, but I think the, yes. the numbers are, what was the statement? Of, and, and I don't know if you can confirm that. I think it was like three quarters of the uh, annual budget is what we have on reserve. percent is your fund balance, which we'll discuss in a, in a little bit more in detail. Right, but the capital reserve is much higher than that. Yes. Right. So we're we're basically at an annual uh, budget's worth of uh, of what we have in capital reserves. Yes. Right. So I would not be wanting to pad the capital reserve more at this time. Any questions on the summary? I do actually. Since okay. you since you brought up the revenues um, here uh, in, in as far as the budget goes, um, with four and a half million, would you mind adding that column? Since we already have all the other columns, that's the only column that's missing. For the where it is in March yeah. or for the month? Well, for the, for, the, for, the, for the meetings going forward. Right, exactly. Right. What would be the year to date budget? Um, as another column in here, yeah. both on the revenue and then the expense side, um, then we don't have to. Absolutely. It's just a formula anyway, right? So yes. it doesn't really hurt anything. Thank you. Questions on that? Any questions on any of the detail? Right, moving forward, our fund balance as of the end of March. Um, I added a, a little item at the bottom and I'll explain that with the next two uh, segments. But right now our fund balance for operating on a science net balance is now at 22 um, million. And a huge reason for that is I moved a lot of things that were in construction uh, in progress to our fixed assets being two and nine, seven and eight, and the, the, a small balance left over from four and five. So that fixed assets about a quarter of the way down was about 27, it's now 53. And if you scroll down to the bottom, that actual convertible cash or 2.9, I know that every year the public gets stuck on what exactly is our fund balance. What is a fund balance? So I kind of created a, 
definition, if you will, as layman's as I could create. And then I have somebody read it who knows nothing about accounting and said, I don't know what this word means. I don't know what this word means. So I've also put in the definitions. So ultimately, when you think about fund balance, it isn't a checking account. It is, we don't have $22 million in cash. What we have is cash, some assets, some liabilities, and our equity. All of that makes up our funds. We have a fund, um, certain items of those funds you can reserve, um, putting them under non-spendable like inventory, restricted like our system development can only be used to develop our system. Um, committed funds, which is our trust funds, which in our true fund accounting is actually its own separate fund. It's not really part of operating. And then assigned, which is our encumbered expenses, which means we reserved this money for expenses we knew were coming that didn't hit in that fiscal year. And then we also uh, assigned a fund balance reserve, which is that 33% that you guys have voted on. And then our net income. All of those then add up to our total operating fund. So in and about that, I took this month's operating fund from your fund balance report that you're used to seeing and kind of broke it out a little more when you're kind of looking at it in terms of fund balance. And considering it's not a full checking account, how much of it is tangible? Meaning we could, in dire need, turn it into cash immediately. So of that, we have $3 million in bank in the bank. Obviously, cash is cash. Of our accounts receivable, we could all get on the phone and get that $700,000 in as quick as possible. That number has me shocked, actually. But is that pending invoices? That's our pending receivables. Yeah, so customer, customer invoices that aren't paid to date. Correct. How much of that is uh, aging, like past 30 days, 90 days, 60 days? I would have to check. I don't know about that often. Okay. I don't think a lot because I've cleaned up. Okay. So this is just a current invoice, yes. uh, uh, current monthly, basically? Yes. Inventory, we could liquidate if need be. Well, that's not days. current month. No, it can't be. I'm sorry? That can't be current month. 758,000 times 12 is $10 million. Right. Right. I would have to look at where that is. Yeah, I was just going to say the same thing. 50 from what I can see. 100,000 100, times 12? 758,000 times 12. Yeah, no, I, I fully what agree. What page is that? I don't even see this that one here. on my packet. It's the second it's page. Right there it is. Oh. Balance oh no no go no down no you don't, you may not have that in go the package down. is that was that in the package it should have been i'm not seeing it right after i'll the share fund balance report there was a two page this is yeah i don't think you put yes in the package that explains my confusion <laughs> You have that. I will get you an aging here yeah. next time we do this. So prepaid, obviously we could ask for a refund because they're items we haven't technically used yet. And then liabilities, which are legal obligations, accounts payable, which are outright we've used, we need to pay for our current liabilities or our current portion on our loans and bonds. Long term, okay. technically That's could be right. hold because they're due in future years. Questioning. Which leaves us with that 2.9 in our general fund. If you run down to the total fund balance, general fund 25 minus the things we've assigned, minus our net income and minus what's remaining. Of that 25 million, only 2.9 is true cash. So next year when we have this discussion again, we can say, yes, we have $22 million of unassigned funds. The majority of that 
Mm -hmm. It's our fixed assets, right. it's our buildings, it's our land, it's our three treatment plants. What we can <laughs> emergencies have is 2.9 million. So is that why all the questions come up at the annual meeting that they, they think we have, we have 20 million in the bank? <laughs> so it's really just our net equity. I mean, our assets minus our liabilities pretty much. Or depreciated Correct. asset balances. But again, those are accounting terms that most people don't understand. So I'm trying to, and if this still doesn't make sense to you guys, because I'm hoping to put this in next year's annual meeting, yeah. let me know and I can. I need to just make it clear that it's not an account. It's not right. a bank account. It's a grouping of all of the department's assets. And that's what we owe, well, and that's what's left. The complaint was not so much the unassigned um, fund balance, it was the capital reserve. Capital reserve, I think. Capital was reserve a, was I the criticism. Was a valid comment, to be honest with you. I agree. Um, and I think we should the, continue to look at that. Yeah, I agree. It was the capital reserve, okay. which is not part of the balance here, right? It is. Well, the cap, it's trust, which is the 6.5. Right. Under its own, technically, its own fund. Yeah, kind of got mixed. Um, yeah, but right, it's not complaint, and not a complaint. But there was a question on capital reserves within the one of the people that actually trusted trust trust funds was very happy with the way we. Yeah. I don't think we, I don't think we should go overboard for sure. I think right. we've had a good right. too, but I think we're on a good yeah. track, right? But um, we shouldn't blow any further. <laughs> but I can also include perhaps with those balances next year. The actual projects but to get down at a, a lot like what i do for you guys yeah. here's what we have this is what we plan on spending this is our influx at the end of the year i mean our, spend our sounds good use capital reserves on right i mean well. we use them to continually sure. improve our system so we add to it because we use it Any questions on my definition? And please let me know if this anything does not make sense. So this is different than like the town or the school, does it? Yes. Mm -hmm. I was yes and no. So the way they account for it, no. Yeah. The end result, yes. So that twenty-two million or twenty, yeah, twenty-two million under unassigned. They may ask the board to say, mm, we really like 20,000 of that to remain and the rebalance goes back to reduce taxes. Mm -hmm. but they have to officially ask, whereas you guys do not, there is not, it just stays as our equity. Yeah, I just, it's like that, that question comes up every annual meeting. Yeah. That's why I'd like to be able to have the answer. Well, I think when you talk about the town and the school budget, they don't put all their equity in their budget. You know what I'm saying? When they look at, they don't actually yeah, put that's their assets, was... like their buildings and stuff like right. that. So then when we say this is what we have and as you know, an operating fund balance, Correct. they're like, why do you have that much money? Because right. they're... They're looking operating for accounts operating are an, only. A, are the cash that they get in to run for the year, and it had, doesn't have assets in it. So, is there a reason we we put assets in there than no one else does? It, I'm just trying to be consistent because then the questions would go away. <clears throat> I mean, it's not just one answer. It's going to change over time. We saw. Expenses and supplies go way up in price, and way down, and, and way up in scarcity. But the capital, or the unassigned, I'm sorry. And yet here we are today, uh, experiencing the downside of that. So it's going to ebb and flow. We see more apartments going up by silos and the fire station up there, and um, it's going to be a moving target that we have to manage on a regular basis. Yeah, I know. I'm just asking about if if it's appropriate to include the physical assets in in these numbers, then? Well, they have not been part of the budget proposal. They're not. This right. is just a fund balance, right. which they don't normally see. 
from what so I literally they'll see at the annual meeting, they'll see our projected revenue, our projected expenses. And then someone always asks, well, what's in your unassigned fund? Which then brings us back to this. Oh, all right. So that's they don't actually see this whole thing. anywhere. It's just that's the number we have to give out. And because that number includes assets and they're not used to seeing their assets in there, they think it's this so fixed massively assigned. They are, they're part of your asset. So it's all assets minus your liability equal what's left over for your fund balance. But the fund balance wasn't the criticism, the capital reserve was the criticism. I think they, they were, were both. Yeah. Um, but again, the cap with the capital, the trust, I think if we show that, yep, we're, we're spending, we are adding, we're spending, we're adding, that there is that this isn't just sitting there, I think will help. And what we're spending it on. Building. That includes the building. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. That, um, that explains, <laughs> that helps yes. me understand why there's that, the question keeps coming up, you know? Now the fund, the um, capital reserve balance, is there any like um, rule of thumb for a, Capital for reserve trust, balance, yeah. Not that I'm aware of. Okay. So the only rule of thumb you were using before was the 33%. So that's your fund balance that you guys had. Um, yeah, I think- You're basically taking that number. of that 25 million, you are reserving, what is it, 1.9, 33% of that. 33% of your net following year's budget, just in case operations we can run. So. Okay. 25 million is not our budget next year. What was that? Yeah. Our budget is six. Right. Where did the 25, where did, you're talking about the unassigned fund balance. Nope, the fund uh, assigned fund balance reserve, 33% of next year's budget. What's that value? I think part of million, the, almost. the capital reserve accounts is when we have the articles to move the money into the capital reserve accounts, the way they're written makes it sound like we don't plan for them. They're just for emergency purposes, which, which they are, but we also there. plan out what we're doing in the future. So I feel like, I don't know if it's legal and the wording is because that's what we have to say. But if the wording was, you know, for future, for future projects and future purchases for like equipment and facilities in the, you know, that are part of our CIP or something, it wouldn't sound like, hey, this is an emergency fund because they look at this going, wow, this is a really big mm -hmm. emergency fund. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. A good point. So yeah. I feel like maybe that, I, I don't know if it can, but maybe that wording should be changed because it's always like, in case something um, happens and, you know, emergency arises. Sure. If any, if we can't change the the warrant article itself, that right up underneath, we can't. That we can. Right, because that I think uh, I think that, like yeah, three times yeah. we asked for like more to move emergency funds into our trust, and it's like right. they're like, well, how many emergencies can you have in a year? Well, but there are different types of purposes. Correct, so correct. But right. it, they always but, make it seem like it's an emergency and not right. something that we've planned. We can't put it in the warrant article language because then we're. Uh, appropriating that amount specifically to that kind of emergency, right? To that specific or even CIP uh, <laughs> initiative, right? It has to be in the explaining text. Yeah, you wouldn't want to name a, a project. You get more detailed in right. the explaining text. Right. To say these but instead of saying like an emergency, maybe for the upcoming yeah. planned expenditures for that account. I think you could do something like that based on the fixed asset depreciation if we're using a... a yeah, what's what's would be a normal useful life for the depreciation schedule? If you pack away your depreciation each year, theoretically you're saving to replace those fixed assets. I don't know if that's realistic, but maybe some percentage of that is realistic. But that could be a component of it, plus anticipated new expenditures. Okay. Yeah, I mean it depends on what it is the useful life. Um, How do we remember this nine months from now? <laughs> <laughs> I take notes. <laughs> Don't go anywhere. Should we put an action item on here and even just let it sit there for nine months? You could. I okay. mean, 
I mean, Kristen and I talked right after the meeting anyways, and that a lot of this stuff was something we wanted to I'm just throwing stuff against the wall, I think we'll, too. It might not be a horrible idea to run it by the accountant and see if it I feel like sense. when I read them next year, I'm going to remember. Yeah. So, why? Right. Explanation. Well, and the, that relationship to the CIP specifically, right, is, I think, what's missing right. for the most part. Correct. Right. Which is what I try to do with this for you guys. Right. So, maybe I much simpler version of this. I think that was the one of the answers I tried to give was when Underwood does the studies for us and says we need to try to put aside whatever it is, 800,000 a year for capital reserve projects and things like that. That's what I think other people don't understand that, you know, because we, so we're collecting a lot of those projects that are going to use that 800,000. So they can give us the yeah. too. Yeah. And really, that was a lot of that was based on pipe replacement. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, there was some oh, yeah. capital, but the, the big portion of that was just pipe replacement. Right. That, that's a good example. If all of, a lot of our pipes are at the same age and when they start going, it's going to be like if 20% of our system all of a sudden needs to be replaced. 1953. That's that's huge money. <laughs> <laughs> so that that table that table, I don't think that I would see this in the package for the annual budget. For one, I think it is probably not necessarily self-explanatory for a lot of people that don't have an accounting background. Okay. Right. That's and, why I'm right. trying to Right. Not, not that, that we won't hide anything, right? Uh, <laughs> but but and, and obviously this is all public uh, information, right? Um, as part of this meeting and beyond. But um, it's a lot of information already in the package, right? So I, I do think it makes sense to potentially explain that the fund balance balance includes, you know, the what was your formula here? Uh, you know, our Big fixed assets. as you know. Uh, here we go. Fund balance is assets minus liabilities, right? Okay, no, I should know that with my tech. <laughs> that um, but you know, it might make sense to explain it verbally, okay. right? What the um, unassigned uh, fund balance is, just for people to to have that understanding. But I think if we itemize it like that, if people see fixed asset fifty three million dollars, no, no like, right? Right. My my opinion. I know that I had started last year where I started including some definitions and things. I can continue that with some of the ones that I added here too. I mean, it helps. The whole meeting is about budget finances. Right. It's much useful information for the people that are not accountants. Right. The better. I can do that also. The people asking the questions operate the town budget and they look at the percentages there and they look at ours and say, huh, how come? So Correct. but they have to hand their facts to the section. Okay. Reluctantly. Um, all right. Next reserve, there are trusts. So I have spoken to Ron about this. I have done some reconciliation with a lot of our finished projects to make sure that what you guys have budgeted in terms of how much was coming out of operating, how much was coming out of a grant, how much is coming out of a loan, how much is coming out of capital um, or the trust. And if you look under equipment facilities, and I apologize that this is tiny print. I don't know what we're looking at. The, I'm sorry, the trust funds. The capital reserve balances going after the profit and loss. Mm -hmm. No, before, oh, yeah, right. right after the fund balance explanation. Can I make a suggestion? Yes, that for next month, complete number, the whole packet, the whole packet, yes, One, two, whatever, and it's a page. Yeah, I can do okay. Adobe lets you do that. Yes, it does. Are we looking at? 
It's called Merriman Village District Capital Reserve. It's got that, yeah, you got it. Yeah. No, I meant specifically what line were you? <laughs> <laughs> well, you're being specific now. <laughs> I was trying to let her pick up where she left off after I. <laughs> so, of the reconciliations, if you look under equipment and facilities about a quarter of the way down, you'll see okay. right monitoring wells and not equipped monitoring wells. Yes. From yeah. what I can see, you guys at some point that I cannot find did actually vote to take that those two amounts out of capital reserve to close the project. But unfortunately, since I cannot find those votes, which I need to make the request, I want you to kind of keep those in mind. Next month, I will give you a breakdown of what those are, what it makes up of the reconciliation that I did <clears throat> along with an official we need to vote to take those out of capital. And then I can request it from press. Who's our the treasurer of the trust? Um, if, if I recall, we didn't take them out of the CIP. We just took the time frame out of them, didn't we? I don't remember that. It was about three months ago, maybe. Was that recent? These are old. They, they have to be older than I was here. Because I've never heard of them. Mitchell Woods? Not Mitchell Woods, but like Not the, the right, new Mitchell the right Woods. monitoring wells and that monitoring yeah, wells. Yeah, right is that property that we bought so, in Hollis. Yeah, I never bought a property. <laughs> in Hollis. Is it an easement or it's an easement? It's an easement. Okay. Purchased the easement from right. Hollis. Uh, it came and met here. This is right. Yes. And her daughter. Yeah. Okay. We'll look for that. Because there was a vote. Right. Yeah. Okay. For, that, for that one, yeah. It was over a year ago. I can't tell you that. More yeah. than that. And prior to me. Okay. Yes. So it's definitely prior to me. Yeah. No, it was at least all yeah. four years ago. Oh. That long, huh? Yeah. So in addition, under land acquisition, there's also I guess so. The hundred and four, which is the final payment for that land also. Those once we find the votes, huh. we can ask for the trust. Those will close those projects. Four and five is reconciled. Seven and eight is reconciled up to where we have a few more um, requisitions to submit, but it's reconciled, reconciled up until today. Um, and then also under equipment, we did receive the money for the truck that we it was part of this year's capital budget for the $43,000. And then in terms of the remainder of this year, <coughs> every term pike at 274, which one says we still may not need, still may not need. Cross. That's, you're still under what? Uh, their equipments and facilities, I'm okay. sorry. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then the 101A with Continental Boulevard and Post, Boston Post Roads is roughly um, 301000 Yeah. That I'm assuming. That was off a bid. So unless there's, it goes over, that should be a good number. Okay. And then our PFA polishing treatment. Um, you guys have voted for 125 thousand um, dollars that's all obviously a project that's still going so where that number falls that's the estimate right now um under system and development artificial recharge <clears throat> of seventy five thousand. the mitchell woods engineering development twenty five thousand. then over under water purchase kind of check contract year two we are Crossing out because we're going to bring that into the budget. And then the additional GIC replacement for two and nine. Are we going to need one for this year? Because we didn't, we have, we've had one for two and nine. We got three months left. I think we're good till, um, no, we're good. We should late, be good. Um, September, October. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's a chart in here. Yeah, okay. for yeah. Lynette. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you just we just replaced that yeah. one. Like 
couple and you're months asking months about together. fiscal year right not, not this fiscal, fiscal year, year. yeah yes, the next three year. months yeah well, 209 should be good actually uh 78 should be good as well okay we're replacing so, the other one at, tomorrow as it stands right now we will not be taking anything out of water purchase for this year what about was four Don't or five tomorrow uh well four or five that is tomorrow that change out Okay. But that's coming out of the. That should be in operating. Yep. Fine. Okay. And then preliminaries for next year of um, where we will stand. So hopefully at the end of this year, although <coughs> our interest rate is really good with our trust rate now, also, if you look at some of the interest and fees that we are getting. So total year end for land, 1.5 million. That's probably gonna increase since we have three more interest payments of roughly $4,500. Um, same for equipment, um, averaging about 2.8 right now. But again, our interest in fees, and I don't even have March's activity on here because it didn't I get that particular statement rather late in the month. Um, System and development, 1.1 million. Legal, 108,000. And water purchase at, uh, uh, I'm gonna say back up to 266,000 at that point since we're basically not using it, but we are putting money in. I would have to note as well, that, uh, the system development capital reserve account, that's basically, uh, impact fees so that's what yes. new customers coming into the system are paying those are that amounts that we need one more in our each year is actually the balance of the <coughs> revenue for system development charge to actually put it in that fund yeah i have a couple questions mm -hmm. uh comments so for one i think uh there's a tiny typo water purchase um, unless I'm failing my English. No, you are not. Um, no, and just because this might, you know, get into public hands. But um, so the unassigned fund balance, <laughs> just to get back to that. Um, <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, so we have to, I, I just want to be really clear. I think this is your projected year end, fiscal year 2023, right? Based on these numbers. While this. right here. It's halfway down, and then we start. I start. Well, my point is, we're looking at eighteen million fifty-five here, and here we're looking at. And it says for twenty-three. Twenty-three, here. right? So there's a discrepancy, and people are going to ask where. Even if you if you take the net income out, you're, you're twenty-two, right? So they're two different numbers, four million dollars apart. Right, that's gonna go over like, I'm not gonna finish that sentence. Um, so uh, I was, again, my assumption is based on these being year-end projected numbers, that this is a year-end projected fund. Not the very, not the very bottom. No, 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 but the one down here yeah, that's- Yeah, and I, I'm actually looking at that should right. say the 22. Well, and it should be labeled as year-end, while this one is an actual, this is a current actual, if I'm not mistaken, right? So we have- yes a quarter of the year left. So I just want to be very clear that, you know, if someone looks at these numbers and is as confused as I was a minute ago, we can avoid that by labeling this as year end, projected year end, right down here. Makes sense. Yep. And that one is, if we ever update this one, this is an actual. Yes. At the current date, year to date. Good point. That's $4 million apart, right? So uh, people don't <clears throat> swallow that easily. <clears throat> There's a discrepancy for me. Thank you. Any others? Nope. Not for me. on the P and L. Okay. For me, starts on page three, but that's all right. My question's right there. On the health insurance, we're up third. Did there something get relabeled or something? Budget for an additional seventy-eight thousand dollars on that item. Well, we're we're down. An employee and 
What line item is that? Just health 50500 yes. is health yes, insurance. Yes, yes, yes. We're up 78,000 though, over last year. Warren, hold on. You're looking at the PO accrual basis. Yep. July through March, 50500. It says we spent 350 on health insurance this year versus 272 last year. That's there was an increase this year, as is most years with health insurance. Um, and then we also two of our employees switched to family. Okay. Um, which averages out to about seventy eight thousand for those from two person to family. Well, I know the school district and town have also struggled with this this year really bad. So yeah, but the number is so oh, I yeah I noticed it right right. Do you want me to look into give you a little more detail for next month on that? I'm not sure that you could tell me anything that would alleviate my concerns on that. <laughs> That's a big jump. Um, now, we've certainly done well enough to cover it. It's just that I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to budget for a jump like that again anytime soon. We talked about changing some stuff around too, and I don't remember what or if we did anything i don't think we ended up changing we we did change to um higher copays we're still doing this Jesus. Right, that's what it was time's flying by here i'm just gonna fix this a lot of fun <laughs> two years ago it seemed like it was like all right i was just hoping there was some kind of an accounting thing that would explain it away but it's it's actually an increase okay right. Any other questions? Yeah, I'm sorry, quick. Uh, 60,700. Yes. The law monitoring fire extinguishment. Is that just reclassed from a different, is that a new account that was empty in the-, in the I'm breaking it up. It's safety and equipment is the account. And then I'm just kind of breaking it out to be a little more specific. Okay, so it was broken out. Differently than prior years. That's why Correct. it's 100% increase. Yes. Okay. But overall, the budget's for that one line item. And overall, it's actually 30% less than last year, so I'm not complaining. Okay. Any others? All right. On to billing um, and finance software update. Um, unfortunately, with okay, we can um, do the vote of the officers oh. first. Yeah, I was kind of hoping Ken would be here for that. Is it um, what's that? Do you want to put that off then? We usually do that first in the Yeah, I don't know. What what do you guys think? Do you wanna I don't think somebody nominates Ken, he has to be here to accept it, right? Yep. So I don't know if you guys wanna wait if he comes or we can does it matter if we do this later or now? I don't know if the RSA is prescribe can, anything. <laughs> we can have an acting chair, right? We can have an active acting chair for me. So, yeah. I mean, I, I don't think anything's different than the last time. I don't know when, I don't know if there's like a law that says when you have to. Let's uh, you apologize do. later on this one. <laughs> yeah, that's what I think. I would say give him an opportunity to, to, to show up. If yeah. he doesn't make it, then we'll have to nominate maybe somebody else. Just to be safe, I'll make a quick motion for Don to be acting chair for this meeting. <laughs> okay. I'll second that. All right. I'll, I'll accept. <laughs> I'm in favor. Okay, me too. <laughs> Let's keep going. All right. Four zero zero, I guess. <clears throat> All right. So yeah, we'll um, let, let's let's just table that for the moment, not for the meeting, but later, maybe later for the meeting, and um, 
hopefully when he shows up, we can go back to it. All right, so uh, you are going on with the uh, billing and financial software? Yes, after building a little deeper into the utility billing side of Springbrook, um, Amy finally did a brain dump for me and I got to ask very specific questions um, of her concerns with her current software. Uh, we've decided against Springbrook. Um, one of the main reasons is their <laughs> Uh, customer portal and the software really didn't talk as well as we hope. So in changing the customer portal at all is going to be very painful. So we don't want it to, to be less than what it is now. So we've decided against Springbrook. I have now come back to the drawing board. I now have one, two, three, four, five, ten or so new customers I have been contacting. Um, of those, I'm GovSense and MuniLink are two of the favorites so far. GovSense is an all-inclusive. Uh, MuniLink is just utility billing. <laughs> yeah. um, direct API into Tyler, which was out of our price range. AccuFund. Um, which does not have great re reviews, and then Sage Intact, which does have really good reviews, but I'm not sure of the price because it's such a large company. So I have a call into them to see what here we would fit into that, if that's the one. Uh, Amy has not seen either one of these yet. Um, they are both cloud-based, just like Springbrook, uh, GovSense, <clears throat> excuse me, has, as I said, it's all inclusive. Um, financials and utility billing, the utility billing actually um, does talk somewhat to elements. MuniLink is streamlined with elements. Um, so the idea of doing Springbrook, where we were thinking of maybe taking um, the work order piece for just the customer side and using that and kind of scrapping the meter sides in elements. If we go the MuniLink side, we don't have to do that. Elements would still be our work order, but it talks directly. Whereas right now, UMS and elements, it's kind of jury rigged a little. She presses a button that takes her to elements and then she fills everything out. MuniLink actually speaks directly and she never leaves MuniLink. So I'm trying to go sense again, all inclusive MuniLink, I'm having to rethink where we doing an all inclusive again, because it is very hard. The companies I like, utility billing isn't great. The companies she likes, the financials aren't great. So I'm having to rethink this whole thing. And so, yeah, they're all subscription based. They are all subscription based. That is the way software works these days. So changing is not that. It's relatively portable, I guess. Well, the implementation project is where the money is being sunk. I'm, I'm, I'm a little taken aback, to be honest, uh, because the feedback the last couple of meetings was very, very positive, very mm -hmm. raving. It was almost like uh, this is a no-brainer, and this is not the message we're receiving today. I would like to point out that, if you recall, I asked for the um, criteria catalog. Yes. Clearly, there was something missed on the criteria. Yes. So mm -hmm. I would probably suggest that the criteria catalog is being updated I with the same criteria with that made you now Amy's decide points. against this, right? Yes. So that would be the first thing I would do. The second thing that I would probably want to see is before you go too much into any of those, I don't know about you, but I would love to hear what Kenny Bank Waterworks and yes, all those guys are using. Um, and, and get their feedback on what they're content with. They're using GovSense. Well, and maybe it would be nice to have a report of that. Maybe, okay. you know, maybe maybe you guys want to call around and ask Penny Chuck, Kenny and Kenny Bunk and so on and say, what do you guys have for this, that, and that silo of our needs, right? 
and 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 how you, how content are you with it and maybe start there instead of going through seven programs and trying to analysis a i think it was like 50 criteria easily right a lot more right so it's going to be a lot of work evaluate all these systems out there against that criteria catalog so i would do some kind of pre-sampling with the people that use some of those softwares and tell you how you feel about it okay. I, I think it's good that you didn't just proceed with it and know this is a shortcoming so that's good i'm sure you're all disappointed at the last minute like oh this I is gonna work yeah yeah anyway. no but it's more important to take take the time and get it right although yes. i don't know if there's For a sure. limit on how much time we have to make it work My everything is blown out of the water and that to me yeah. that that's the least of the issues yeah it's more right. important to get, get it right, right. yeah stuff. yep it meets everybody's Criteria, if yeah. you will, and it doesn't matter when we start because things can always be imported or whatever to catch us up to have one fiscal year within. So I'm not worried about right. that. Right, would have been more disappointing to implement it and say oh, it doesn't work. Yeah, <clears throat> absolutely. Correct. Yeah, Which I do not want to do. Yeah, and so that's it's, it's good because a lot of people would not have wanted to, you know, change gears at the last minute and said we'll just deal with it, but. I think it was the right choice if you don't feel comfortable. This has budget implications though, right? Because I recall that yeah. you kind of told us <laughs> yeah, that you're going to be saving some yeah, money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You switching so, to the software. My next question. <laughs> it does. That's why I'm trying to find um, maybe not implementation wise in the same order, but find similar costs to fit our budget good talking point to say this is what we budgeted and we want to get it down to this see if they can work with you <laughs> if, if that matters at all i don't know <clears throat> it does for a lot of them yeah. they will have significant decreases for the first year to get you on board <laughs> is what i found for a lot of them um but again i mean springbrook was willing to give us four modules for free but in the end results was like, well, your utility billing doesn't do what yeah. you said yep. it would. So, yep. so going with something that actually works with what we're using or with elements and, and all that, wouldn't there be less modules needed for workarounds? So it says it would be cheaper going with something else? Or? Yes and no. So with the any length to have a financial package that talks to them, given I can find one that isn't the ones they listed. It does do an API integration. And MuniLink Muni did say that they will work with any company that has that. Um, it's just a matter of, you're kind of paying two implementations to monthly costs. So I'm trying to work, but yes, MuniLink, you just pay for utility bill. And it does work seamlessly with elements with everything. So it's it's trying to figure all of these into what we had said is in our budget. And we're not holding on to elements just because we just implemented it, right? There if there's no. any software packages out there that could potentially replace it in a similar fashion that allows us to be integrated in one package. We're if considering that. I mean, if GovSense has or MuniLink has an outstanding asset program, potentially, um, we had originally just thought of taking the customer asset out of elements and that with all of our treatment plans, we were keeping that mm -hmm. for that. Um, I mean, it would really have to with all the work they've done on the horizontal vertical assets in elements it would have to be an <laughs> asset management program. Or it has to be one that's integrated, that's right? Right. If, yeah. yeah, I mean, data migration is one thing. That's a one-time expense, right? Uh, right. What I'm more concerned about is if we, if we continue to have another silo that prevents us from having a good customer, you know, portal and, and, and billing software together with a good finance package, you know, then this thing needs to go. That's what I'm saying, right? Then the asset management needs to go because it prevents us from having something else. I'm just saying if, 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 
you know, ideally we should have three out of three, not two out of three, right? And if one out of three is preventing us from having good two out of three, then, then maybe the one out of three needs to go. It's more of what I'm saying, right? Was that clear? Yes. Okay. <laughs> it was clear for me. <laughs> So you're, you're saying you haven't found anything good enough to replace elements yet, though? Is that kind of what you're saying? When not, with Springbrook, uh, was that way, not as not as integrated as elements is with GIS? So, however, MediaLink does have an asset, does work with elements for work orders, but they do have their own asset management and they link to Esri's GIS. So that's something I've been concentrating more on financial and utility billing, oh, yeah. but that's something I can explore. That, that was kind of my concern that we're not considering a an asset management solution outside of elements. I if that were to open us, it. okay. If that were to open us the, yes. the door for another integrated system. Yes. Ideally, it's a system that covers all three. We're not the only water district in the world. And I would assume and that- A lot of them are in the same situation where they're using one for, right. for software, one for really? utility billing, one for asset management, one for work orders. And they're all changed together. I mean, technically, I wonder what the uh, wastewater plant is using. They have the same needs in the end. Yeah, but they don't have a customer base. Well, they do. It's not tax based. It's it's rate payer based. I think. No, it's on your tax bill. It is on the tax bill. But it's but not it's everybody. A, it's there's a distinction. No, the only the ones who are on sewer. Yeah, exactly. So there, I would look at the, into that too. But I don't know how if it's just the total cost apportioned by the. I don't know. Yeah, so that's what I'm I was thinking. Sure be correct for wastewater, residential is a flat rate, and then you're. Commercial is um, on demand. Give it a report by Amy yeah. as to how they charge it. They take our, they take our usage. water usage. Oh, yeah. That's how the town of Hudson does it. They use the water usage. Mm -hmm. So when you're, the sewer bills. Well, I mean, either way, I'm, I'm sure there's municipalities out there that we can ask yes. what they use, right? And the most that I've talked to, as I said in the beginning of all mm -hmm. this, use there's like four softwares New England uses. They continue using them, but nobody really likes any of them. <laughs> but it's what they it's what they got. Yeah. So I mean if we're gonna change, I'd rather not settle. Yeah, oh yeah. Because it's Agreed. painful to change. So <laughs> yeah. I want to see the town does their building. Yeah. No, it's not right for wastewater. So when you're comparing, you want to use a water company that has customer base, not part of a town. Yes, right. That's what you got to look at. And a good customer portal. Right. So that we can divert a lot of calls and stuff to that. So there's a slim pickings on those companies. That's kind of the concern too. Because yeah. a lot of water com wa water Utility departments are part of the municipal yeah. town, right? Like the vast majority. Yeah. Huh. You know, so I don't know if you need to look out of state even or oh I have for oh, really okay most of these softwares are out of state. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I no, I mean if you talk to other companies, oh, to other water departments. There is <clears throat> um some of the people that I've spoken to, one was in Oregon, one was in Florida, oh wow, one was in Texas. Okay. So I didn't know that. Yeah. Um but one used the financials and not the utility billing. One used the utility billing, not the financials. So I'm like, <laughs> I can't get it good. Yeah. No, I mean, I think keep looking, try to find something that before we settle, if we have to settle. I no, I agree. <laughs> okay. All right. Next, employee handbook. Again, this is just first read. I had given you guys a slip. I don't know, you had come in after John. Um, there was a little piece of paper just before you sat down that said employee handbook updates. If you can kind of describe what I did, what you're looking for. It's in the actual package, too. It is. The package, actual handbook yeah. is in the package. Well, no, that little summary you did. It was in there. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't in mine. From my computer, so. <laughs> 
I thought I added it. <laughs> yeah. So the biggest thing is I added graphics. Anything of the Tamla products in yellow was modified. Is it? There's a mistake on here. And, and Ron knows which one I'm looking at. I'm not going to bring it up here because it's probably something from a non-public session. Okay. Um, there was a change we made two years ago in one of the reporting structures. Yep. Anything in yellow is what we modified. Some of them is major. Some of it's a, a word or two. The old version will be in front of the new version for anything in yellow. Thank you. Um, the only question, well, one question I had is the page 11, mm -hmm. the, the last two paragraphs. It's, it's a little, reading it was a little bit, um, what does it say? In an effort to protect and maintain district employee, employer employee communications, we will resist organization within applicable levels limits and protect the right of employees to speak I've for themselves. Like four times. Not really yeah. sure what. We are, <laughs> I don't know what. to refrain from them wanting to unionize. Oh, all right. Without actually putting that word in there. Because okay, I read it like four times and I was like. I was like, you don't want them to be organized? Like, I didn't understand what, what it was referring to. <laughs> okay. And then the last paragraph, if and when employees examine the option of representation by individuals outside MVD. All right. So you that's kind of all that related. Word, the rest yeah. of it kind of makes sense. Yeah. Okay. That totally makes sense now. Well, should it be instead of ask, should it be like? We're still talking about page 11, right? Yeah. If you paragraph change the last one or yeah. the second? Oh, no, the, second la the last one. one. We strongly encourage careful things of such related issues, such as, or something. There's some either like instead of as or such as. Encourage careful consideration. Yeah, there's a such missing. For where? I'm sorry. So we strongly yeah. encourage careful consideration of such related issues like regular deductions from paychecks for representation fees instead of as should be like because okay, okay that makes sense i was gonna say and that's one that was never changed so <laughs> so i will have that change for next period other thing I thought I saw here. Uh, it goes on merit increases. Yes. Um, page uh, 23, like the last um, <clears throat> paragraph, last two sentences. Pay increases will be normal will be will normally be considered on the anniversary date. Okay, that's fine. Increases of pay will be made only when the employee demonstrated satisfactory performance during the prior year as certified by the employee supervisor department head. Do you wanna do you wanna say something more than just satisfactory for merit compensation? I mean, I don't know. I guess it's a philosophical question <laughs> about merit increases uh, just for performing like the minimum as opposed to a little bit of superior performance. It's up to three percent. I kind of took it as that was the mat the minimum bar you had to before you could get considered for a merit raise. Right. Be made only when the employee has demonstrated satisfactory performance. Increases of pay will be made only when employee has demonstrated satisfactory performance. I think you say like at minimum satisfactory performance. <laughs> 
Oh, just I just got to just do my job, and I'm going to get merit increases. I don't think I don't think that's the. I think the message is if you don't do your job, you ain't getting merit increases. <laughs> Right. Make it something. It's going to be the three percent, though. And to get to three percent, you need to. Yeah. I think that was just like a line at the end. Very gray area. It is. The, it's, the, it's the, the way I just interpret it when I read that is, oh, I just got to do a satisfactory job and I'll get the merit increase. But yeah, you're right. It doesn't have to be the full three percent. If it's just you know it's some discretion, I guess, but. I'm not even sure why we should have a percentage in here because this is going to change annually, potentially. This was written prior to our. It was. Pool. Yes. Okay, I would not substantiate any numbers here at all. And in the end, this is subject to the budget for once, right? Mm -hmm. But then also to the supervisor responsible. Right? So I would keep that completely open. Okay. To just say earn a merit based increase? Yep. Yeah. You like I can put based on the fiscal year's budget or no? Okay. That's you that's that's a given. Okay. You can spend more than what the budget can. Okay. Balance. One of the questions I had is page seven and eight. The introductory statement and the nature of employment seemed very redundant. Seven and eight, you said? Yes. I didn't know if there was a way to, I don't know, combine them and make them more concise or something, but they just seemed extremely redundant. I had made some changes. Um, both, I think. You had changed. You liked the original. Well, this is also was in a different place, too, wasn't it? Maybe if they weren't like right next to each other, they right. made more they sense were, then, but now that they're next to each other. Or as well, a neck up in your brain. It just seems like the first two paragraphs in both are the kind of the, just a restatement of the same things. Like what it does and you should read it <laughs> is the first paragraph. Second and the second sense. one's like, hey, we can't put everything in there. Well, that's one of Limit the details. I wanted to keep the same alignment as before, except for a couple of the in the index and tournament, I mean, uh, yeah. Okay. With that one? Yeah, just something to think about. Uh, page 24, employment reference checks. You might want to double check with legal, but uh, I'm not sure if wage rates and even positions are safe ground for references. Certainly wage checks with uh, the whole data protection, you know, initiatives out there. Probably a good idea to make sure that we are really not putting ourselves, exposing ourselves to any um, legal risk by disclosing wage rates and or positions. Wage rates, I would be fairly concerned, to be honest. But since we're a public entity, wouldn't they be able to really look up the wage rates in our annual report? Well, not for the average employee. Yeah. All employees are public. Here. The, 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 the group. Not the, by the name, well, but no, by no, the... No, no, yeah, that's what I'm saying. By the talking, position. Yeah, when you say when you're saying wage rate based on the classification of the employment, that's a different story. But if you're saying, you know, uh, Joe Schmo worked here from January to December and made this kind of money, then that is an exposure, in my opinion. Our salaries are public. The salary ranges are, but not the salaries. Not for employees for leadership, yes. And management, yes, but because of the budget, but not for employees. Okay. I can okay. search any one of our 
salaries on the state website. Really? By name. Anyone can? And that still may not be the same as answering somebody on the phone. So okay. I, I would check, with you I, I would check that. Is it just management you can search? Absolutely. Everybody who works for the state of So what would we want to check? person's wage just to make sure that they're not lying to us that's still oh, i was making no this is us giving the reference to a future employer oh. potential future employer this or banks it. or banks right banks i have to okay yeah because when we call about like mortgages right. and stuff i've never done that for a bank people get w2s every year yeah yeah i was gonna say the same thing I would consider that to be a scam if somebody called me up asking about it. Yeah, and that's kind when of When I point. bought my first house, I had only worked at my company for, I was fresh out of college, like three months. And so they called and I actually got wage information from the company. But that made Because they didn't have a WT yet. They did, right. So. Then you still have a pay stub. I would just confirm that that's really something we don't put ourselves out there. <laughs> it's such, such a fishy subject, sticky subject. <laughs> And another one quick on page 26, uh, there's a reference here. Possession of dangerous unauthorized materials, explosives or firearms in the workplace. Just gotta make sure we're compliant with that. And what, no, what bullet was that? Um, possession of dangerous or unauthorized materials, such explosives or firearms in the workplace. Just wanna make sure that we're compliant with that, or at least, you know, either, either it's in the handbook, handbook, then we need to be compliant, or it's not on the handbook, and then nobody asks and nobody cares. But it can't be both. So, uh, possession of firearms in the workplace is not acceptable. It's no. a saying, right? Possession of dangerous or unauthorized materials. Such yeah, as and then maybe we have to talk about what that does it mean, right? Who authorizes yeah, the authorities or management or, you know, <clears throat> but they're, they're, I just don't want to get into trouble. You know, we have to understand what's going on here and we have to be precise. The last thing we need is somebody using such a bullet against us. Right. So, boy, I want to check with legal on that then. I think I I think you know where I'm going, so think about it. What you think is right. I just again, either this has to be a language that can be complied with, right? With the organization, right? Or we have to be compliant with whatever language is in here, but it can't be anything in between. Is there any state law that governs that? I don't know. Well, as a property owner, you can define the policy, right? Because, not to get technical, but um, I understand if you can choose to just to still carry, for example, but then you have the right to um, send them away, right? So, again, it's it's about having that clear, having that policy clear, subject to whatever laws that. The premises, if they go to a place, they have to abide by. Well, like you go to like a school, it's no different than you at home. You know, the, the, yeah. the New Hampshire law is constitution carry, so you know, George Moe can carry into your home, and you can recognize that and say that's okay. But I don't know, I don't like that in my house, so please leave. Okay, all right. All right. A lot of and right. I think okay, organizations have the same. A lot of jewelry stores have so. it like written on their doors too. They can right. carry okay. them. <clears throat> Any others? I don't have anything. Anybody else have anything else? I mean, again, it's frustrated. So, so anything else that you guys discover to send to me? The second is document retention and destruction <clears throat> policy. First read also. One of the largest reasons I'd love to get this sooner than later is we do pay for our archiving and I'd say a significant portion of what we have archived is shredded and a lot of the historical stuff scanned and brought in house here I think would be really helpful.
What are we looking at? And I see yes and I see never. I'm sorry? The checklist here just says yeses and never. It's like, is That's there a change to the policy? We don't have it. It's a brand new policy. Brand new policy. But the policy is don't destroy anything ever currently? It's based on the RSA and what you can and cannot destroy, what you have to keep. Correct. The, the ones that say never, we cannot destroy those. Four minutes. But when they say electronic copy, that means you can't destroy them, but you could keep them electronically? Um, or some of them can't. Some still want paper, mostly for uh, payroll items. Um, you need to keep for 50 years after retirement or termination, yes. It's, so to me, you might as well keep them forever. Looks like a lot of the, looks like a lot of the yeses have in the next column those yeses is that as they come in, I know I do plan on scanning all of those. Um, that's mostly for you guys to say, hey, what what's going to remain in paper and what will be remain in scan? We haven't for anything in a while. We have not. And wow, so you can only have to keep like all of the um, what was I looking at here? So we have a lot manifests of manifests and everything only one year. We have a lot of financial stuff. That... Wow. Pat. It was you in the past. We've done a year. Which would be great to or so we're destroy We always had something on the list yearly to destroy. Huh. To get back into that. Yeah. We can see why you'd only keep the manifest one year from the audit because then you have the audit report. So what do you need the manifest and the audit report for? I mean, a lot, a lot of them do make sense. I mean, the last call on electronic copy, it's probably not a big deal just for it's storage for space you, to store, right? Yeah, yeah. So destroy is only what the RSAs allow you to destroy? Is that what that means? Yeah, so again, there's, and then how long... Yeah, you okay. Wait before you just destroy it. So the electronic copy is just our decision whether we want to keep it or not. Scan also. So one thing I learned too is if any time you can print a PDF rather than scanning, you're saving a lot of space. Because you scan it and you scan all the white. Right. You print it and you're printing the black. So I would get electronic copies whenever you can from direct from the source. Amen. Mm -hmm. We have like destruction policies in place too. Like, do we know how to destruct and certify the destruction of <laughs> in documents? Um, it would be with a legally reputable shredder. And we, I'm trying to think who did we in use the past, to absolutely shred it. Shred it. We tried that in house. They would pick up, but they'll right. also pick up. Absolute burn stuff. And uh, the question is, do people know that uh, disposal doesn't mean put it in a dumpster and that we need a certificate of destruction in some cases? I, I don't recall if we've ever gotten a, a certificate of destruction. Yeah. But I, we probably should go. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. this, this is going back a while. Absolute archive, though, they Destroyed something, it would get burned. Mm -hmm. well, and then just they send a list of whatever was burned and sign off on it. So, yeah, with official document description yeah. that this is what happened, what they can picture up on this day. And yeah. we can't destroy that that document then. <laughs> Yeah, it, it, <laughs> normally the yes. certificate needs to come from a third party, right? It, it needs to come from, I mean, we can do it ourselves it. too, but then basically it has to be somebody that's authorized to certify it. But for example, even like, uh, you know, I don't know if anybody uses USB sticks and portable hardware, hard drives or something like that. That needs to be also part of the disposal program. And so is any laptops and hard drives that get disposed of. We have that done, the laptop is stuff done through Block 5, and they okay. scrub the Scrub and they certify that they scrub it and don't give it to put a sticker on there, put the date and everything on. Yeah, they, they should be they should they should be issuing a certification of destruction because otherwise they can literally take that laptop and give it to you know their uh the nephew that just started college, right? And we haven't had them do any yet, but 
we have I have I have on my office and, yeah. that they need to. So I will definitely ask them about some type of certification. A and pile of digital storage. In here about digital storage stuff you're talking about or uh, hard copy? Old laptops. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um. Legally reputable company, and that to get a destruction certificate for both paper and equipment. <laughs> Cook out. <laughs> That's some marshmallows. Sure, if I had a barrel, yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> Let's see. Okay. So I can add that for next month. <clears throat> Thank you. With that, I think I am done. Whether well, you have any more questions or not. <laughs> yeah. Does anyone have any more questions for Kristen? All right. Do you want to, uh, anything on action items you want to stick around for? <laughs> well, we only got minutes really ahead of that, which. Let's um, do a I'm, I'm okay with. Both, both of them. There's two of them, right? There's a. Yeah. Uh, oh, sorry. Yeah, annual meeting and the March 18th board of regular board of commissioners meeting. He wants I move to accept the minutes of the March 18th, 2024 meeting. Okay. Motion by John. Second. Second by Aaron. Any comments, corrections, questions? Nope. Good. Okay. All those in favor of approving the March 24, 18, 2024 meeting, signify by saying aye. Aye. All right. That's 400. Do I hear a motion for the annual meeting minutes of March 26th? I'll make a motion to approve the annual meeting minutes of March 26, 2024. Second. All right. Motion by Aaron, second by John. Questions, comments, corrections? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Four zero zero on those. Uh, action items are next. Only action item that the question was the employee handbook update. Yep. All right. So that you want to you want to have. Um, we eventually are going to vote to approve that. Is that? Ultimately, yes, goal. that is so. As You're going to make some, yeah, that some edits we'll there, some follow up that you just we discussed. Um, bring it to <clears throat> May. What action What's item that? was that? 86. Oh, 86. Yep, and then so you good with putting that date for May for, for May on that? Read? All right, so if you get that, Amanda, change uh, action item 86, the last column to May. Okay, do you want to change it to second read or just leave it as is? Yeah, you could put like parentheses second read, I guess. Okay. And Amanda, whatever the action item number was for the financial software, can you put that back? Oh, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, I can. I'll make notes to do that. Thank you. You can resurrect that one. <laughs> I don't think you actually delete them. We just hide them, correct? <laughs> okay. All right. Yes, that's correct. All right. All right. So I guess if that was it, um, we can just go through these real quickly. Let's see, number two, I think we have that in the back of our packet, correct? Yep. The, the uh, ESRs from Underwood and um, Emery and Garrett. Um, anybody have any questions on that? If not, just go on to... Um, Change the base. Oh, yeah. So, uh, yeah, good catch. Uh, so, number two, what are we doing? Those quarterly. So, that would be May, June, July. So, if you want to, can you change the last column for action item two till July? Yep. Number 23, uh, sample points throughout the distribution system. That's May. Okay, we're good with that. Number 43, um, ongoing salt committee meetings. That's targeted for March. We had that in March, didn't we? Yes. Yes. 
So probably, I don't know why that was for April. Um, probably not planning on doing anything further or were we looking at doing something else? I can't remember why it says what April. We, say? we said in the meeting that we were going to do the next one in... <laughs> I don't remember. I don't remember either. I'm supposed to check with Jamie on something. I can't <clears throat> Just, I'm wondering why it says April. Were we supposed to make a decision on something well, this we were, month? I don't know. No, we are. We were looking at um, something. I don't know if that's another one on here. It is. Oh, there's a separate one on here. Yeah, we're still looking at that. Uh, October for a meeting? I think it was. I'll have to go back and look at All right, so um, October. 43. So do we want to have the, the subject say next meeting targeted for October? That sound reasonable? Yeah. And then and then yeah. move the date out to um, September so that we remember to set one up for October. Yeah, that sounds great. And I'll double check what we said too, because I wrote it down when the next video is gonna be and I bring that binder. I don't remember that one off the top of my head either. <clears throat> All right. Yeah, I'll double check it too for next meeting. All right. So do you want do we want to change that now or do you want to just put this off um, from April to, to May? September for now and then um okay. we'll confirm. All right. So Amanda on number 43, change the last column from April to what did we say? September, September and then the next September. meeting targeted to October. Yeah, so where it says next meeting targeted for March, just change that to October. Okay. Okay, so 58 is in May, 9 is September, um, well, that's Springbrook, so uh, what does that mean? No, on hold due to Springbrook software. All right, yeah, so we'll keep that out there. We may have to change it to not Springbrook, something else at some point. We'll go back to that one later. I can just remove this part that says Springbrook and leave it as yeah. software. Yeah, yeah, software. yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the, the DLT sign. <laughs> we're still waiting on that. Oh, the letter. Yeah, we're waiting for the so letter. We, to, uh, we did go to the town council. I saw that. It was a good, the, good meeting, good presentation. Uh, and Jamie went with me. Did a... Did a Brief presentation. Um, they signed off on it. I have, Jill actually has the letter when we're working on scheduling. The... Okay. So you said the DOT, you you kind of wanted to wait till you have everything in here. I have that in a, I have an email from them. They, I asked to have it moved and they wanted to wait on moving that, any signage until. They got to uh, sign off from the, all the departments. Yes. All right. I guess that makes sense. All right, so let's push this out. Uh, you think you'll, what do you want? A couple months on that maybe till June or? It was. Did we, um, what's the time? Have we sent down to the school board yet for? No, we just got the other one. So now we can schedule the school board. Again. So the next month you think we can? Yeah, we can. Um, so you want to push it till June instead if give you more time to get, who else do you need to get signatures board, from? Just the, yeah, the last one. Fireplace, um, the town council boss all right we'll put may if you can get it done if not we'll kick it out to june but all right um so for um number 67 just change april to may amanda okay um 68 is next month 79 is an update um on the waterline extensions any really progress on that so we've uh We've gotten 30% drawings from Underwood. We, Brian and I have gone through those. Uh, it's really close on the cost. Um, we've changed some locations of water main. Uh, uh, when we were placed on uh, same size electrical, we, it's, oh, yeah. kids across the street. 
some of the shorter roads, like uh, Mullican and Gerard, was rather than do maybe eight inch pipe we were even planning, we're thinking that that two inch would cover that. So we reduce the size of the domain on that to try to get cost two down. Two inch? Two inch pipe, yeah. So there's no hydrants down there? Um, there'll be one right across the street. So it's six houses on, on Mullican. Um, even Gerard, Gerard would be across the street. Excuse me. We placed hydrants out. We, we've eliminated some. We've, uh, you know, how are they laid out? We can do a property line. And stuff. So we've done that. We've met with the town to make sure that our placement was okay. Uh, follow up with them as or we asked them about. Uh, uh, pavement recognition for some to be on the road, so what they would require on that. Um, also, so that's been done, and now we're waiting on a meeting with New Hampshire DOT, try to DES, <laughs> to make sure that they're okay with it. I don't care about I don't care about the this project. Um, they don't own that road. They don't. Um, <laughs> To get kind of their blessing, and then we actually have, have a meeting. We're going to set up a meeting with Amy Russo as well with the HDS and look at funding some additional funding that might be needed for the project. So, so the, the two inch main you're talking about is in Gerard or um, Gerard in the uh, mountain? Oh, Gerard. Oh, yeah, I was thinking it was Paul Mary going down. No, 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 that would be yes. That would be that was why I was like, really, we want no, to do that? Okay, eight inch would do it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no, eight inch would go down. We'd have the hydrant placements out on Paul Mary. And then, All right, that would be Gerard. And then that, that that makes more those sense. Six homes up there. I think it is six with fed off of a two inch. All right, the that, off on the end for. Huh. Trying to scale back the cost to a lot of ledge on Paul Mary and Gerard. I mean, ledge in different spots. Yeah. Wilson Hill and, and those areas. You think it needs to be blasted or can it be? Well, that's, and, and I did express that to uh, Amy Russo that one of my fears is so much ledge on Paul Mary oh. and Gerard. We're going to. If we could cover it, we, we blast, put the water main in. Then the service it, connection. The service connections are the homeowners going to even want, if it's, I don't even want to guess what it, what it would cost to blast. Are they, are they still going to want to hook up if, you know, if that grant isn't going to cover it? So we would, we would, we would have to blast the lateral over to the property line and put the curb stop there, right? If there was yes. a ledge in the, in the street. Could it even be that? Yeah. From that curb stop to the house, could we? Yeah. Let just well. You can always fill too, though. You could. All right. Yeah, there's, there's, there is options. I mean, it, I'm still a little wondering about a two inch line in Mullican for six homes. Um, and then, and we're, and there's I'm a, just going to look at it. I mean, it's right. they're going to, they'll model it as well. But I, I did some calcs. It seems like, I mean, we use a five eighths meter and I think you're only going to get, it was uh, 200 and, Twenty gallons a day, or, or twenty gallons a minute. Yeah, that really needs. You know, it. so I mean, so when you start putting all that together, a two inch would handle it fine. All right. And actually, I went with an inch and a half um, service connection. It's going to be two inch, but I base it on not really knowing what the the ID was. I went with my calcs on an inch and a half line, and it was. Oh. It works, so but they'll. I'll have a model it as well, just just to be a uh, double check. All right, taking uh, irrigation into account as well. That's true. I, probably not. I didn't out there, but I mean, if they're, I mean, they're on wells right now, and it. Oh, so they'll probably keep their wells for irrigation. They they may. Um, I just don't know how you navigate that if everybody says we want to use it for that irrigation for whatever reason. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> so much out of their meter so that was i did the max out of the meter for the day okay so with so, that support irrigation it should it, it should okay 
Should be fine then. All right. I mean, I think our we should definitely confirm that. Just oh yeah, no, no. I mean, All right. yeah, it was kind of we threw these thoughts out, you know, these kind of ideas, and obviously don't confirm it, but I, I, I believe it'll be fine. Is the savings like substantial? I don't know yet. I mean, I, you're still doing a trench. You're still doing all that. It's yeah, just a not, pipe, you know? you know. If it's uh, six hundred feet of, you know, eight inch yeah. ductile iron at, you know, twenty thirty dollars a foot over, you know, I think plastic is still around. I think it's under five bucks a foot. For, yeah, plastic. So I mean, there is. There would. I don't think it's going to be a lot, but it, there'll be some savings there. And then Mulligan backs up to Horse Hill. Or no, no. Just thinking, like in the future, is there? Uh, we want to push that in the future, you know, and we'd be shortchanged. Uh, no, uh, it doesn't back up to Horse Hill. It actually backs up to the McCabe so. property. It's off of Wilson Hill. Yeah. So we've. Um, I don't know. I'd like to know how much really the savings are because it's. I don't know if we have any other streets that we put in two inch main anywhere that I know we have. No, have but I we know. have two inch around. I mean, we haven't done it in a while, but. Um, All right. Just seems it actually is a short small. street in town that uh, somebody's looking to do a mainline extension on, and they're going to do the two inch. It is only, it, and again, it's only like six houses, and um, huh. they're just they're going to get to their house, and then if anybody else wants it, they can bring it further as well. And we we want somebody wants it on the bottom, so they're gonna come off of easily. Somebody wants it at the top, so they're coming off the other road, and it's gonna kind of stop. And if they can connect it in the middle, as as you know, people want to hook in, and that's the same deal. It's six houses or so. All right. If that. Okay. Uh, any other questions? Or uh, let's see, what else we're we looking at here. Get that down. Uh, nice. Yeah. Some additional. So the Saint Cobain work. Um, I did talk to Ed Gano, I believe is his name, WSP. So that was one of the things that was brought up at the PFAS, uh, the PFAS town meeting was- um, Yeah, 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 water main extension. Water, water main extension. Wire road? We have an, uh, what, the wire, Christopher- Wildcat Falls. Wildcat Falls area, Brenda Lane. And then there's some, uh, where well, the water main's already in front of their home, they're gonna do some uh, entrance entrances as well that uh, aren't hooked up. The last time I talked to them, they hadn't awarded the contract, so they did send out the, the award for the contract. There's two different contractors, one for the, the services, one for the main line. Oh, yeah. um, what they're waiting on now, it's just contract documents and signage. And then I can get a schedule after that. They don't have, they, obviously they're gonna talk with the contractor to get the schedule, but. So on that note, it just brings up another question that I remember. There was a gentleman at that meeting that asked, what's the status of connecting? Did he say he lived on Wire Road? I think he said Wire Road. He actually, it, it, excuse me, it is a relative, I believe, that lives out there. I don't know if it was his father or father. Oh, yeah, it, was, it wasn't the, him. It was, yeah. The speaker was Tim Dutton. Yeah, yeah. Tim Dutton was the speaker. But so on Wire Road, if my memory serves me correctly, we did extend the water main down to where the brook, there's a brook that crosses and which is almost into Bedford. So if there's somebody that lives on wire road that wants us to extend the water main, what, I'm not sure, do they live on the other side of the brook? No. Because if they live on this side of the brook, it should be there in, in the road. Wire road right? isn't going to be water main extension except for Brenda Lane. It's, it's only going to Brenda? No. If anybody is waiting on hookups, it's the service connect. So the water main's already past their house. It's just, they need the service. And that's that part of that. Tim was contract. asking about the service or was he asking about the, the main extension? I can't I, remember. Really, I wouldn't but. know why he would know about the main extension. He just wants to know when it gets to his house, right? So want, yeah, the water basically. Cause we, I remember like five years ago, the first year that we were on here, we, um, there was a vote to keep mm -hmm. the main, like St. Cobain had to put a certain length in and we said, just go to the mm -hmm. brook. Mm -hmm. And we paid that extra mm -hmm. extension. Mm -hmm. Now, if that extra extension is required for St. Cobain's remediation, we talked about 
putting the bill, sending it to them. Yes. Is that I don't, come into play yet? None of that. I believe the services are before. But that makes sense. It's, it was before the, the extension of the last one. So with that extension, St. Cobain covered everybody with the mainline extension that they needed to with that on that wire road. Um, I don't know exactly where it is. I know there's a few on that on wire road that are not connected. Yeah, it's. You know, I'm thinking it's one of those. I think it's one of the right in the, right in the intersection, but I'm not 100. percent All right, I haven't read that area. I used to read that area. Just let's keep uh, keep that in mind. If if that segment of pipe that we pay for turns out that it becomes part of the delineation that St. Cobain's required to pay for those extensions, they should also they should pay for, recoup the cost that we spent to us, and they should pay for the service. Can I ask every time? All right. Okay. Yeah. Don't just don't yeah, lose no, track. Sound. All right. As long as you're aware of it, that's good. Yeah. Here over. Because I remember at the time I was thinking, why are we putting it in, and then they're just going to connect to it, and then when they, it's going to be done, and we're going to lose that payback revenue. You know what I mean? So, I was in favor of not extending it and only extending it when. Single Bain was forced to extend it. And I don't know that we're there yet, though. I don't know I don't that, know that we're, we're at that point. There yet. We may not get there, um, but it, what it costs us to put it in, I don't think we'd ever get that deal again. So no. it's worth putting it in, I think, but All right. with what the uh, contract price was at the time. Yeah. Okay. Anything else on that item then, on the water main extensions? Nope. As I get more information, I'll just leave. Which you guys know. All right. And uh, employee handbook update that was uh, just discussed. What did we do with that? We pushed that out for second read. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Uh, salt reduction letter to be sent out October. So that's out for later. Um, and then we got the next four due in April PFAS filtration media alternative vendor plan. That was something that was just handed out yes emailed today or something right yep um do we want to put that as an agenda item for another meeting maybe how long is it do we want to talk about it now or um, i didn't see it i just got emailed no, today i wasn't going to stop i may want to get over you know that was kind of my yeah but, and i just <laughs> why don't we um it was everything was right on my computer and i'm kind of typing it out and so let's but it's let's so put it off for the next meeting, I think, <laughs> and make maybe make it an agenda item. Yeah. Uh, so change eighty eight to um, May. No, okay. is that the right one? Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Um, and then investigation of solar power options. There's probably some discussion we want to have on that. Do we want to do that now or put it as an agenda item? What do you think? Wolf? I, I would say it's agenda. I, I mean, yeah. these answers, there's some that didn't, he didn't understand what I was asking clearly. So, um, and some of those, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure that there's still property tax impacts. I thought they were for in residences town. in town. Could be residents. No, I think yeah. they actually got taken off for residency. Oh, did they? Yeah. So, yeah. so there were some and they were basically they mixed out. Right, right. right. But I'm I'm still pretty sure for commercial properties there's an impact. So the only place it would in Hollis, right? Hollis, we, we get taxed on the. My understanding is we get taxed on the land, but not on the buildings. I believe so. Yeah. We don't get taxed in Merrimack. We don't in Merrimack. Not anymore. But right. I think that's for residential buildings. I'm not sure what's true with uh, commercial ones. So well, you're talking I, about. But I think there's about solar. You're talking about. No, right. No, but if, so if we're like, so what you're saying is we might get taxed on solar panels in Merrimack, even though we don't get taxed on the property taxes in Merrimack. That's, That's my saying. concern, right? Oh, no. so it was kind of. I thought they just added it to the assessed value, and they could. Or we don't pay property taxes. In Merrimack. But a simple no to me is not enough answer. No, I know. And everything <laughs> seemed like I don't think he really. Those answers seem like they <laughs> all point to the agreement, which we right. don't have even a like right. an agreement to look at to yeah. see what right. they normally say. Right, right. Yeah, and it keeps going. I mean, I didn't ask for silicon, which I know that PV solar panels are made from silicon because I used to make them. Um, <laughs> uh, I was asking about silicone, which is potential 
you know, there, there can be runoffs from, from, from coatings uh, from the EVA process where they where they run through the laminator with EVA folds and uh, foils and, and and get sandwiched language together actually it's called the laminating sandwich and there's potentially runoffs that I would like to know about and PFAS is one of them by the way they can be PFAS per coated so the last thing we need is a PFAS coated PV solar panel next to well four and five yeah. <laughs> that would be fun in court <laughs> shouldn't be saying that but yeah <laughs> well we already got treatment yeah that's true yeah. <laughs> yeah, i shouldn't be talking about this but no. yeah i mean so um and and the same thing with 12 uh, i know that there's cases when uh uh you know the roof penetrations for the solar panels have caused damage to the structure underneath and um it's it's a little bit of a runaround to, you know, to get people to agree whose fault that is. If the building shifted or because somebody installed it wrong in the first place or the wind tucked on it and dislodged it, you know, and, and all of a sudden we're sitting. Yeah. yeah. Anytime so, you put a hole in a roof. Yeah, it's my roof, who's paying for it? Right. right. Anytime you put a hole in a roof. <laughs> and the answer is a thorough site inspection is completed to assess any potential issues prior to even beginning the process. Yeah, sure. But who has the final say? And you know, how do we get how do we get leverage, right? right? If we're the ones with the damage, right? So it's stuff like that. So, uh, so what do we want to do with this action item? We want to um, uh -oh. it or just... can't you just get the insurance co uh, company to give you an assignment of the policy? I just you'd have work done on your property. You'd want the, the, the insurance to to be there for the liability, right? right. The problem is with with property insurance is I just had two cases two years ago. Well, all they did, did come out and say we're not covering it, but they still checked up my insurance rate six hundred bucks a year. <laughs> so um, I didn't say they were ethical. I just said that's what they're there right, for. Right, right. No, no. <laughs> I, wow, really? That's, yeah, yeah. And that's apparently pretty common. No good deed goes on. No, no. So. Uh, I mean, I'm not opposed to it by any means, but um, I think there's two or three questions that are pending. So it's a pleasure. We want to uh, just bring this back at the next meeting. Is there more to discuss or? What I can do is I can respond to these three questions. And... Also might be the kind of thing we want to keep an eye on uh, for the future. <laughs> The thing that struck me at the last meeting was him talking about the fact that the tax credit went away. I mean, if there was some financial benefit to us from the tax credit, which I don't know if there is. I think he said we don't pay taxes. That's why we wouldn't get a credit there. Yeah. So I don't know. I don't think they went away. I think they just, that we couldn't realize them. Isn't that what he said? Yeah. I, what kind of credit? I don't even know. Does it come off property tax? What kind of tax? Oh, federal income tax. Oh, yeah, so we don't pay income tax, right? That's why we don't, I guess, yeah. this entity, MVD. But it wasn't even anything that we used. It was something with credits that the, it was something with credits that the, the public service would use or something would use, I believe. Okay. It's credits back to Eversource still. Because the our only value is that we pay less electricity cost right. and right. potentially get reimbursement from Eversource if we produce more Correct. than we need. That's the only benefit we have. And that might be enough. I'm not saying that's not enough, but we don't get the average homeowner's credit, right? For benefit from it. Figure that we'd make up for that somehow. Penny. Ten. Timing. Sorry, I'm late. It's all right. Thanks for showing up. I know you were delayed. We did, we post, postponed the um, selection of the chair and all that. Like, oh. all that stuff. Um, yeah, I get. What do you What do you guys want to do about the solar thing? Just um, agenda item it, or just kick this last, um, keep it on the um, action items list, and just push the date out for follow up or something, or um, I don't know, keep it on the action items list. And Wolf's gonna, you know, put more comments back, and then if Jill feels like she has enough to make it an agenda it item, okay. then throw it on. Yeah, right. I don't know if she was looking into like other vendors and things too or you know i know this is not a top priority and you got the day-to-day -day business right comes first but um why don't we just push this last date from april out to um 
Do you want to go with May or June, or what do you what do you feel comfortable with? I can send go with June. I got nothing in June. You want to hit June? All right. He's probably on vacation in June. <laughs> yeah, that's why. <laughs> Could be. All right. So let item number ninety just change the actually, last I'm column right. to uh, June, Amanda. <laughs> I think I'm actually the one that suggested we look into this at the beginning. I think you were. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But he, Jill's name's on here, so that was a good move. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, 92 is update website for salt use reduction alternatives. I don't know that we did anything on that. So yeah, we, have, we haven't we got to any. Yeah. Right. So at it. the salt meeting, you were there, right? Yes. At the, uh, did the topic come up to ask DES for what other salt alternatives, like true alternatives? We did, we did briefly discuss it. I think that's one of the action items that came out of that meeting that they're still looking into. Okay. All right. Because there's questions about like what, like we don't want to say things are okay that aren't really like, you know, it's, yeah. it's not the easiest list to put together. So we don't really have the next um, meeting for that group set up. So we may not get this answer for months till we have the next meeting, right? I, well, I think Jill was back and forth with um, uh, yeah. the DES representative. I, know I, <laughs> I can't think of it either. Uh, yeah, I know you're talking about, Bill. All right, so that's going to actually continue we'll outside of the meetings. Yeah. Okay, good. Uh, let's just change that to... Um, Next month, then, yeah, if we can get an answer on that. Okay, so that's number 92. Change it to uh, May. Uh, number 94 looks like you had um, an itemization of the, uh, the, the cost of the flushing and everything. Um, yes, that went on today as well. Right. I would table that for the next meeting, too. Yeah. Let's have a chance to look through it. Do we want to do do that in non-public or? Well, do you want maybe want to? Do you maybe want to investigate if there's even any leverage there? If it's worth pursuing any of that with Kerry, yeah. Okay, and start from there before we talk too much about it. Yeah. So let's just let's put ninety four to May. And maybe you can report to us what to do after your discussion with Carrie. Yeah. And then um, 95 water line extensions. Yeah, we already talked about that one as well. So uh, I guess on that one, 95, that, that could probably be like a monthly update. Yeah, why don't you just put monthly because that matches the other one? Yeah. yeah. So number 95 in the, um, the, the, um, Call it this. The actual action item. Yep. Um, you want to change that to like monthly update or add yep. monthly update to that. And obviously, in the last column, just make that May. Okay. Uh, and then, oh, okay. So May. Do you want me to make that last column say monthly too, like 79? Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, yeah. So, you know, yeah, just say monthly. Yep. Thank you. Uh, and then 96, we did talk to this, right? Um, there's some information on the package. Uh, Ron, could you guys forward me that email, please? I'll summarize what we have so far and give some feedback on some of the open items. Okay, I can. Right. Yeah. I have a, a quick update that Jason Cohen is willing to come to a board meeting to discuss anything you guys want yeah. to talk about. Yeah, I appreciate that. He's a great guy. Um, now, the, the answers from the uh, PLC provider have been very helpful. There are still some gaps on the VFDs, but the rest have been very helpful. Okay. So um, I think it would be most efficient if I just summarize what we have so far and, and map out any gaps and I can do that. Um, it's not going to take me too much time to do that. And then we can talk with Jason and whoever else. It looks like um, we might need to get the VFD uh, commissioning engineer Go ahead. Do you need to sneeze? Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm waiting for it. <laughs> off, but... <clears throat> okay, go ahead. So um, somebody commissioned those VFDs, right? Started up those VFDs. And uh, we might need to talk to that person yet because I'm sure there's parameter sets on those VFDs for the motor that they're driving and so on and startup parameters. And, and that's one of the open questions that 
question that this what is it, Tim the gentleman that did the um, not for profit Tom. Tom that Tom didn't answer. He didn't he didn't have the answer for that. So we might need to find out who that was. Sade. It was through Underwood. Basically. That's what I figured. Yeah, yeah. Sade. Yeah, yeah, he used that name before. Yeah. 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 So we might have to get we might have to send some of those questions to that guy. It's, but I, we can do that as part of the summary summary. So I'll I'll summarize that and send it back. Yeah, so that's already on May for the action item. That's so we'll fine. just leave it there. Yep. And, uh, I just need to know Jason was willing to come to this mm -hmm. meeting. I said that was probably a little too soon. Yeah, that, yeah. Um, whether well, him for mayor is still on a wait. No, I think get some other answer, questions answered. He may not need. Okay. Once you receive the summary, I'm going to point out what Jason might need to look at, and then we can take okay. it from there. I don't think we have to have a meeting. It's he's he knows. What yeah, it. if he can respond. Yeah. To you yeah. And, just loves to okay. Know, yeah. So. Yeah, no, 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 he's <laughs> a great guy. <laughs> That's a meeting I'm going to miss. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Security. Oof. Yeah. Um, so let's see. I don't think we added any new action items, right? No. Just brought one old one back. Brought one back. Yeah, just to, just to bring the financial one back. That's right. Are we good with um, action items then? Mm -hmm. Other questions on anything? We can move to old business. Anybody have any old business? A few. Seeing none. Anybody have any new business? I do a very quick one. Um, I brought this up pretty much every year, and I don't think we really made a change there. And maybe Jill would be good to be there. But um, every year I'm being nailed by a couple of people because they don't realize that MBD has its own elections. And at a minimum, it is being requested that we put the annual meeting on the town calendar. Uh, which should be really, really easy for us to do, and it's very minimal. All it needs is on the uh, on the budget calendar. You know, if we put that task on the budget calendar to inform the town, whoever manages the town calendar, um, of our uh, deliberative session, which is basically our our hearing, right, is our deliberative session, um, and uh, maybe even phrase it that it's basically public hearing slash deliberative session, right, because that's where people come to debate. Uh, on the subject in the Warren article, which last time we had two people sitting here, right? <laughs> but just having that on the town calendar is something that I think quite a bit of people would appreciate because so many people still don't understand that MBD is not part of the town, right? So you have to shift back to the little theater. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure the masks are going to be coming yet. The but, uh, theater. <laughs> So and it's just a suggestion. Obviously, the board wants to uh, wants to agree with that. Um, I think it's a good idea. Yeah, I'm, I think it's a fair idea. Want to have them be okay with that? Include our board meeting schedule as well on their on the calendar. If it, mm, we we could, but that's more than people are asking for. It's but quite a bit more work, right? So, is it something uh, possibly when it gets close to the time to say like in February, like January's bill, have an, like a, a statement on, on the billing statement. You know, not a like, bad idea either. I mean, yeah, I mean I where they, you know, everybody. Yeah. Is it feasible to reach those that we do electronic billing with for that? I'm sorry? Uh, given the idea to stuff the uh, bills, is it feasible to do that for those on electronic billing? Like just public notices? In general, or yeah, just adding this information. We're talking about a mailing, and if it's going to be part of the bills, yeah. well, you yeah. got to consider that. If, I don't think I don't you know. need you even need this, like you know, but like a note on the bills. on the bill statement. Yeah. That's a such date. Not you don't need a separate mailing. There's something maybe they yeah. add on to the bill statement. You could. If they're electronic. They get it PDF anyways, and it will. Yeah. Whether your mails. So or whatever message is on the there. Message. I'll talk to Amy. I got you. I know that we were putting a lot of. There's been different things on the bills, and we're kind of limited on space what goes on there. And, so and things are getting smaller and smaller. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm assuming there's room, but I don't want to say, yeah, we can just. Oh, we would probably temporarily replace something yeah. you know, for that month, right? It doesn't have to be the same text every month. So, on that note, have we been sending out like little messages on the bills? 
I, I don't look at the bills. I don't know. I, which. I don't look at the bills either. I know we, <laughs> do, right we do put messages. What a great messaging system. Messages <laughs> on the bills about rate increases and stuff. Um, which we haven't had to do. And watering. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Recently. And watering and stuff. And water stuff. And yeah. the portal. That we'll do like the annual meeting. The, <clears> you know, stuff meeting like that. That would, that would help, I think, get the message out better. It was. It, it was not I think what he's saying is like everyone's like, where do you post this? I never see it anywhere. It's never anywhere. I don't know what you guys are doing. And it's like, we go to the library and a post office and you know, we do post it in the paper. Yeah. And like nobody sees no, no, that though. You no, know, no, I get it. I get yeah, it. Yeah. And we put it on our sign Facebook front. page and stuff yeah, like that. I believe it was on the yeah. Facebook Yes, page. absolutely. Yeah. And the news, email newsletter, absolutely. And yeah, also, yeah. um, Merrimack TV puts it out on their schedules for the week yep. every time. Yep. Like our meeting tonight's on and Merrimack TV's schedule for Absolutely. the week. Oh, good. All right. So just the calendar. Is, yeah. And, and I would start, let's start okay. one step at a yeah. time. Tomorrow, see if that's something that we can do. I think the budget hearings and, uh, and you know, and, and, the, uh, um, and the annual meeting, if we start there, that's already big step forward it's called public yeah. hearing in the annual meeting yeah okay so i would start with those Sorry. we have two hearings right two mm -hmm. budget hearings right mm -hmm. just one it, we don't normally record work sessions you mean workshops no 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 no, 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 no hearing 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 we had one hearing but then sometimes in the middle of the year we have them for some other random thing we have a public hearing yeah for some reason i thought we had two like budget hearings usually anyway Oh yeah, maybe. We, well, we, we I don't think for budget. We have the two work sessions. We meet first. I'm not talking to kind of get an idea of what. Yeah, I'm not talking about those. I'm talking about public hearings. Oh, so we don't yeah. just the February. Yeah. The, okay. Uh, yeah, I don't think we ever had more than that. Yeah. Public. If, if we add that in the uh, the annual meeting, I think that's great. Okay. I'll call a call tomorrow and see if that's something that. Okay. That we'll cool. That's one. Um, second one. Every year, this time of the year, people ask about car washing on the not odd or even day. Yeah. And every time I look on the website, and I swear it used to be on our FAQs, which it is not right now. Um, it, it's, a, it's a little ambiguous, to be honest, at least the way I read it. Um, basically, it doesn't necessarily say anything about using a hose for washing things, right? Be it motorcycle, cars, bikes, snowmobiles, whatever, car, houses really too. Um, at least not as far as the permanently valid um, odd even restriction. It does say on the level one that it's, yeah. I think, prohibited altogether or something like that. I don't remember. So. <clears throat> So there's basically on level one, it defines something, which I don't recall what it was, but it doesn't matter. At least it defines something about yes. washing items and using hose for, for, for non-garden reasons, right? And, and lawn reasons. And we I always are restricting residents from doing that. Well, on the, even our odd days, I guess, is what the question right. was. So I guess my point is, yeah. I think, Somebody asked I think when we're not on level one, two or higher, yeah, I'm not sure if it's clear what the regulate, what the, what the, what the restriction is as far as using hose for, um, I mean, the odd, even of course, we're not supposed to use a hose to irrigate lawns right. on our off day, right? Or your right. ground. It does say that. System. It does say yeah. that. It yeah. also says that technically you can't have like a sprinkler toy going uh, on your off day, which I'm not sure if I agree with that one. Um, uh, but uh, it really doesn't say at all about if I think it does not say at all what to do about washing my car, washing my house, washing my motorcycle. Um, on my off day. I think it, it specifically talks about um, power washing for houses or whatever, but I don't think it gets specific about. So I think we need to look at that again and maybe clarify. Yeah, I think it might have, it might have power washing was for business. Yeah, I would be right. against any but kind of restriction on washing your car. Car washing, but not for car washing. I believe the odd even only just really applies to lawn, lawn. the lawn water. Yeah. But I don't think it's it. clear that's enough in that regard. That the stages, and then that's when it starts. And if it says anything <clears throat> different, then maybe it should be changed to that. Right. I agree with that. Right. I actually think that's exactly what it should say. I think all the other language we have on there okay. almost needs to go away, and it needs to say, on if the odd even restriction is in place, all this does is I think it includes like don't fill your pool, right? No. And no. well, but it probably should, right? No. No. No, that's a. <laughs> it says the pool owner. I agree. <laughs> no, it's, it doesn't. I don't want to wait to fill my pool because it's an well, even day. And, right. 
April. Yeah. Well, we're gonna do it. Once. We don't restrict that. That's always look. Like I actually got a drain line. Right? So you're not <laughs> filling it and draining it that night. You're right. Filling it, and you get the use of. Right. Yeah, it's a one-time it's shot. A one time. Yeah. Right. It could be every two weeks or a week or something. But yeah, there's always some. You can lose some. I wouldn't want to prevent kids from playing in the sprinkler. Oh, but that's what literally Ritz says no, right Johnny, now. No, Johnny, not today. It, it's an odd it day. It literally says tomorrow. that right now. That's <laughs> in the FAQs. <laughs> it literally, and I think the thought, well, the thought behind it was, well, then everybody can put yeah. a lawn toy out there, right, and sprinkle their lawn. That was the thought behind it. Drive your truck on but, your lawn. But frankly, if, if, wash your how truck. many people are going <laughs> to put a little, little sprinkler <laughs> toy out there? To get a little pool for the kid to play in, that's, right. that's fine. It's been said on the forum, by the way. What? Just drive your car next to your lawn and wash your car. Right. <laughs> yeah. So, long story short, <laughs> it might be a good idea to have another look at that and see. Are we, have we overshot the target? <laughs> have we overshot the target a little bit in that regard, right? Because really, that, no. Uh, you don't want to know. I actually, you know, that, I think we've, it's gotten lax. Because I think originally when it came out, people were like, it was washing of the house, it was, you know, the, the power washing and, and, and all of that. I mean, I can remember going around 20 <laughs> years ago and, you know, take that behind. <laughs> yeah, type of a, you know. But I mean, like last year, and as this year starting, I mean, it's not real, it hasn't been really concerned, but I get what you're saying. We should have the proper language so it's right. no confusion yeah. when we do get to a situation where we do have to worry about that. And, and we mean, have level one, sorry, we have level one, two, and three, right? So, I mean, right. it, it's not like we can't escalate right. it if needed, right? Yeah. But the regular odd, even one should be exactly what you said. Just right. don't irrigate your lawn. Done right. deal. Everything else, knock yourself out. Right. But don't or irrigate your lawn. And, on I, and you can't so. really expect that people are going to go to FAQs when they have it. They're just going to be like, oh, right. it doesn't say I can, so I guess right. I'm going to do it. Right, right. So, yeah, I agree. Yeah. And I don't think that would be abused. Like I don't see like 500 people washing their cars next to their lawn so they can water their lawn. You know what I mean? I just, I don't, I don't see that. Oh. All right. <clears throat> In the last one, very quick, I'm not here June 20th, more than likely. I'm gonna be overseas and I can't probably remote in because it's gonna be 11 o'clock at night. Yeah. 20, that's the next one. That's the next one. No, no the one May after. 20th. Oh yeah. Yeah. Next. yeah. So I think it's June. <laughs> The, 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 the June summer meeting. That far. Yeah, that's time's going too fast. So. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, we're having so much fun. Time's flying June by. 17th. Actually, I'm sorry, June 17th. So All right. I will likely not be here for that one and not be able to attend remotely. Okay. All right. Uh, so, new business, they'll set superintendent report. Just a couple things. Um, the pilot columns. Um, uh, XOR, but confirm that they're still willing to bring down their pilot skid for the column testing. Uh, that was what they were yeah, so we about. probably do uh, seven, uh, seven. Yeah, so we'll actually get out everything that was in that list. I think we'll actually be able to add a seven point on. Yeah. Uh, EPA, yeah. EPA approved our lab uh, for PTAS samples. That nice and uh, that's the lab that we use. Murafins, is it? Blue? Yes, okay, cool, that's great. So we can do the standard that we're used to doing, right? And have to send, yes, yeah. send off. The concern was when we weren't going to get the information back to look at it, it's going to take forever for those EPA to yeah. come back to us so we can get a copy. Huh. Close to them. That's we, good. We, uh, we Need to collect some water samples and four or five percent soil. So that's uh, not a big deal. Yeah. They got to ship us the bottles first. So, so are they yeah. doing a separate thing? You're going to do a uh, not the pilots at the um, oh, they're doing one of those first prior to they want to know the water quality before they, but then they're still they're still willing to send that pilot equipment over to the treatment plant though. Yep. All right. So they're doing even something even extra. And is that on their cost too? The RSSCTs? They charge. Are they, you know, I don't know. I'll have to ask on that. I'm not sure. Uh, I hope. I hope it is. I would think it would be because that. Part of the, I think that was like tens of thousands of dollars or something, if I'm not mistaken, just to do an RSSCT test. I 
normal media. There, there we go. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Welcome back. Thanks. Yeah, I lost you guys for a sec. Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> So um, yeah, they came out. It's just it's something new. They they're looking for somebody to not partner with, but a test. kind of te like a guinea pig. Guinea pig, yeah, that's a good word for it. <laughs> yeah, I'd like to know more about that. Yeah. So that's we're gonna move on. All right. They'd asked for some media, so we actually pulled a five gallon bucket full full of media out of four or five. We're gonna send them on their dime. Uh, they can start you know looking at and hopefully be a part of you know if it makes sense i don't know if it makes sense down the road for us but hmm. we have the lead lag so it, i guess it would be for more so for um a newer system coming on if they could do just the you know one vessel regen it you know regenerate right. it right on site and put it right back online for us it's not That's that fun. an issue because we can take one offline and keep the other one and keep yeah yeah have that Downtime. Did they indicate there'd be some cost savings with this new procedure? They didn't, and I'm okay. thinking it's going to be. I don't see it being a cost savings, but I, I, I don't know. I can't answer that. Right now. A tough sell. I have yeah. so many questions. It sounds yeah. really interesting, but I have so many questions. <laughs> yeah, they didn't really give a whole lot of information on the. It's a food grade process. I thought he said. Um, <laughs> <He's too remote. laughs> yeah. I think it's definitely worth sending them some um, yeah, to see I mean, if advances anyway, science it's worth a five gallon bucket. So D uh oh I just lost your name. D yes um was here. Uh, Amy. Yeah, Amy was so was down as well and they were, you know, they're kind of pitching this and it's we're going to have a site in New Hampshire, and nothing's been. Uh, we haven't seen anything, and nothing's been really. So, was there a presentation that they did somewhere? A presentation. It, we don't have. It wasn't sent to us. It was kind of a. It was a Zoom meeting type thing. Oh, all right. Kind of okay. get, you know yeah. who they are and kind of what they're looking to do, and huh. there'll be some more information coming. Yeah, I'm intrigued. <laughs> I figured I you know. At least get them started off with you know some media and see what they come back with. Right. Yeah. At first it was you know generating on site, then but if the factory's not or the regen plant isn't close enough, then they'd have to send a truck and capture the water. You know, capture the yeah. Because uh, the PFAS has to go somewhere. Yeah. If you take it out of the carbon, it's got to go. Then they the tanker to, truck. Somewhere, so that's the case. It yeah. had, it's no different than what we're doing now. So then you got to get rid of the wastewater. So what's the cost of that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But if you're not trucking media <clears throat> and forth, that could save. Yeah. Know, How we'll much see. water? Well, that's you know, the, I guess the savings could be on the makeup media. Yeah. If you're not, you know, if it's releasing it and you're regenerating that media right in place. <laughs> You're not having that, uh, you know, that ten percent. I think we were around eight percent for makeup media. Yeah, I mean, I wonder it would be would it be cut time time down too, right? I mean, if it in the sense it's not getting not leaving the property yeah, I guess to get would be some... to get recharged and then brought back. I don't know. Yeah, I guess you wouldn't be handling it, right? So yeah. there's a savings in handling the media if they're just flushing it through and taking the wastewater. I'd be curious on <clears throat> how much of a savings just because it's yeah. something different. Uh, it, yeah. Yeah. And how, I, feel, I just feel like how much water would it take you to flush out the PFAS? And also, how do you confirm you got it completely flushed? I bet you. And then we're not releasing PFAS yeah. like the flush. I can't see that being it's like a lot, a lot of water. It's always got to be some left behind, I would think. Yeah, I just. Yeah. Does this guy know that we're trying to treat to non detect? Oh, yeah. No, we. we All right. No. Yeah. Right. Because he's not going to come in and say 99.9, because that's still not going to do it. Yeah. Well, if you spin this wheel further, it begs the question why is this not a technology that could be permanently installed? 
in a plant, in a plant to yeah. regenerate, you know, a small amount of media in the you first just have place. have a waste so, tank that you have right. to haul out every so, once I mean, in a this, while. This yeah. opens, I mean, yeah, like, and we're, we're fantasizing, right? So it's not very efficient right now. But, but I mean, are they going to come back to us with a presentation then, or? Oh yeah, there'll be there'll be some other. Yeah, they're they're going to get some media. We've got a media, like I said, package up some media for them. That's going to be shipped off to them, and yeah, I, I hope to hear more from them soon. Yeah, Intriguing. interesting. Yeah. Willing to you know listen to any new technology, right. it just it has to be yeah very thoroughly proven out to to work. So, yeah. I'm sure there'll be more. Um, we're on this side of it now, so which we're, we're going to you know plant tours and with the with the new uh, standards coming out. And, yeah. Oh, you know what? Excited. Right. I like the vendors are coming to us and wanting us to participate in new. Right. Exciting things. Yeah. That's a great place to be. It is. Good point. All right. Um, the only other thing I have is we uh, we have a GC change out tomorrow at four or five. Oh, uh, yeah. So, uh, anybody wants to go? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> of course, I'm on the road all day, but yeah. Uh, no, that's good because I think it was, uh, you're right on track. Um, because on this list, it says the eight month of lead operation is uh, April 22nd. So we're right on track. And then so after that gets changed, <clears> out, <throat> eight months from there is going to put us in December or later. So we're looking good because then the other wells are October and September. For, for change out the way those worked really good so that we're not in the middle of summer change it did it worked out good really well. yeah we should be past the, there we shouldn't have any downtime <laughs> in the summer if, when the know. turnarounds night you know right within two weeks and right the last one was they called yeah, a week but okay we're gonna get things we're not used to this okay right. gotta get stuff put back together and i mentioned that in a presentation i did for the hp 737 commission that i'm on on every friday they meet uh, one Friday a month, and uh, the chair asked me just to do an update. So I showed him our graphs of the PFAS and the distribution system with basically almost all non-detect since the last plant went online. And I did comment how this new vendor we're using is taking the pains away from the O and M scheduling and all that hassle. It's working really well now. A lot oh, better. Kick the vocal out. When I yeah, uh, does it have, it's they so Avoqua merged with Xylem and they sold off their slurry piece to uh, Diesel Tech or however you say it. Yes, it was very painful dealing with them, and we, we switched to a different vendor. We're using um, Calgon makeup, it, it's not Calgon, it's it's uh, my understanding is the same as Calgon, it basically is the okay. same as Calgon, but it's the uh, GAC. 12, 1240, uh, 12 by 40 mesh size um, media. It's actually cheaper than a vocal. We can get the, the change outs done cheaper. Uh, very responsive. Um, Great. So much. It, it would take us all day with a with a Desert Tech or a Vocal. It, they've been, you know, oh, by noontime, we did two change. The last one we did. Um, they brought the media back, if I want to say this correctly, to two and nine, where they had the two trucks. <clears throat> we went back over and, and took the media the same day out for the next exchange. So it, it's worked out. So they delivered the reconstituted stuff and then took away this up the yeah. next one to go out to the yeah. truck and all that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. And I don't want to say it was when they came to two and nine. What's the name of this company? Carbon Active Corp, I believe. Yes. Oh. Okay. Good. Thank you. Sounds like it's a lot smoother. That's good. Mm. Awesome. And I did include some of the estimates. the Estimated but rough pricing um, for the changeouts in the uh, um, media changeout uh, plan. Let's we'll see there. Well, yeah, yeah. Uh, kind of going off of that. So 
Okay. <clears throat> Is that, did we say that was going to be on the agenda for another meeting or just we changed the action item? I can't remember what. It is. I think that was going to be in. I just want to make sure all these pieces that are hanging in this packet. Look at the action item now. Bring them back and approve them and whatever we need to do. Action uh, agenda item. All right, that's good. That's that's what I hoped. All right, since we, that it? Since we just talked about four twenty two with the change out, um, and which well is that? Four and five. five. Perfect. Okay, I I do apologize. I forgot that I'm new business. Um, I have a request from Representative Bob Healy. Um, Kelly Ayot is coming to town on the twenty second. And um, I have a request for her to um, visit Wells 4 and 5, which could be, of course, convenient if there's a change out happening at the same time, depending on the timing. Um, and as you all know, this is always a little bit of a sticky question. So I wanted to make sure that I bring this to the board and ask if anybody you know, had any concerns with that. Uh, my understanding is this is a, a, you know, a regular visit. There's not going to be any entourage or press or anything, but I will definitely make, excuse me, I will definitely make sure of that, uh, that we have an understanding of that. It's literally a, a, a visit of, of Kelly. I'm sure she has maybe staff members with her, um, but that's a pure guess. So I can definitely clarify that. And I don't know, I have no idea about the time and what time of the day. So is there any- What date? Is it date set I think I think 422, yeah, Monday. <clears throat> You can say the change is happening tomorrow. Tomorrow, eh? Tomorrow, but the last time we got it back within a week. Right. Oh, so it might so be putting it back in. If, they want to, if, it, if I can confirm that it's going to be on the 23rd, they're going to come back. It might be something they want to come back on. The, if they want to tour it on the 23rd, it might be better. They might be able to. I know they probably have other things. I, I can offer both dates, uh, um, but uh, but I don't know. If it, it could what be I know is that the 22nd. It yeah, yeah. happened to be. Uh, Sure, oh, scheduled. Yeah. <laughs> this is what I got. This is what I can do. Yeah. No. no, that's fine. Board is okay with that. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, that, no problem. Absolutely. Okay, and I'll make sure that, that we have. I'll make sure we have any understanding of what the visit entails. So, and if I get any Could, any more information, I'll share with the board. Thank you. I'll even try to make myself available if uh, if I'm, you know, you two. Yeah, yeah, else, sure, right? it would be good. Yeah, yeah, for sure. All right, good. Uh, It'd be we, nice to have a governor who cares. I didn't say that. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> but yes. Um, <laughs> are your superintendent report done? I'm done. All right. Uh, any? Yeah, that's what I was going to do. So uh, we should um, need to elect commissioner, chair, vice chair, and personnel liaison. Did you say there was a finance? Something yeah. texted me. I'm looking at her. Yeah. Is that a... I don't know if it was we a pointed to that position or... Position no, or we no. just discussed it. I'm, just, I'm <clears throat> like, yeah, I think we just discussed it. Okay. When it came to. It's the audit liaison. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I did it last year or something. Yeah. We started doing it last year. All right. So let's take nominations for chair, I guess, at this time. Start with that. Nominate you. <laughs> Surprise. <laughs> Status quo. Second. Oh, I, Second. I, I accept. So <laughs> what does that go to a vote, I believe? Yeah. I think we need a second. So I'll second. second. I'll second. Oh, sorry. All right. So motion by, <laughs> motion by um, Ken. Second by John. Are there, are there, is there any other nominations for anyone else? I think that's the way it needs to go. Okay, then seeing none, I guess all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 And I will vote for myself because I'm okay with that. So 500. Zero, zero. Um, nominations for vice chair. I nominated King Ears. I'll second that. Right. Any other nominations? All right, seeing none, all those in favor of Ken for vice. Does he accept the nomination? Does he accept? Yes, sorry. I accept it. I was yeah. assuming. <laughs> yeah, I was assuming the fact that you came in and still came to the meeting <laughs> that you wanted to accept it. Okay, <laughs> which I appreciate that. 
All right, all those in favor of Ken for vice chair, signify by saying aye. That's aye. five zero zero as well. And that leaves um, personnel liaison. I'll nominate Wolf. I'll second that too. And any accept. other any other nominations? Wolf accepts. Seeing none, all those in favor of Wolf for uh, personnel liaison, signify by saying aye. 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 You abstaining? I am. All right, so four zero one. Wolf abstaining. I think like he had a comment to make. He didn't roll his eyes, so maybe that was the wrong choice. <laughs> <laughs> I said, you didn't yeah. roll your eyes, so maybe that was the wrong choice. <laughs> so you're not supposed to be a pain of <laughs> All right, questions from the uh, public or press? Anybody on the... Uh... Do we need to cry in deep down? Good, good, good. <laughs> And cringing. <laughs> the finance liaison. Do you want to do finance? I guess we should. Maybe that we should add that on here. Okay. Um, any nominations for finance liaison? I didn't realize even that was a position, but well, it's, I do remember now. The whole point of it was I brought it up two, three years ago because we had no independent report from the audit. The report came through staff. Yeah. Right. And the audit is an independent report that technically should come from an independent source to the board. That's really where this was coming from. So which I think is a great idea. So and I do nominate Darren. I'll second that. Any other nominations? Seeing none. Uh, all those in favor of Aaron as the finance liaison signify by saying aye. 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 You abstaining? I'll abstain. Okay, that's four zero one with Aaron abstaining. All right, so we got to remember to add that onto the list for next year. Um, yeah, so press and public. I don't know if you can tell if anyone is on the. Um... I also do think that should be the first agenda item next year. It shouldn't be after the financial report. Because technically, we don't have a board uh, chair position. Yeah, I think. Um, the meeting after the election. Especially so it really should if... be the very first thing. If one of the seated chair or vice chair is, doesn't come back after That's the correct. meeting, then right. you wouldn't have somebody. Right. Yeah. So it really should be the first agenda item. Right. Um, we'll deal with that in three years. Mm -hmm. No, next year. Yeah, every, year. every year. Every year. Oh, well, yeah, but I'm mm -hmm. saying you're, you're here for a couple more All years. Right. So. <laughs> no, we're going to go through every year. <laughs> <clears throat> Participants, nobody's uh, is on. Okay. All right. So uh, I guess with that, I'll entertain. I will say the next meeting is uh, May 20. And uh, with that, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Second. Motion by John, second by Wolf. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 That is unanimous by zero, zero. Thank you, Merrimack. Have a good day.